The 1995-96 Bulls went into the All-Star break with a 42-5 record, putting them on pace to make history by hitting the 70-win plateau. And most importantly, Michael Jordan was just hitting his stride. In part two of our three-part look back at the championship team, Ron Burke focuses on a once-in-a-lifetime player who is enjoying his time back on top of the basketball world. The Bulls put the first half of the 1995-96 season to rest and went to All-Star Weekend in the best of spirits and well represented in San Antonio. But no member of the Bulls was happier to be there than Chicago's rejuvenated star. All right, Mike, are you having fun again? I'm having a great time. You know, I love being behind you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, watch your feet, watch your Playing in his sixth All-Star game, Scotty Pippen was a big contributor. But the spotlight belonged to Michael Jordan. Jack, Jack, Jack. Ah, right there, dog. Right dog, team. Four is here, which is Pippen. Three guys taking it out, got it? Back right here. Right here. Hey! Jordan scored 20 points and took home his second All-Star MVP award. Yet another reminder that he had reclaimed his status as the game's best player. Uh, as we take a look at the numbers here, the 06 07 Mavericks, will they get to 70? Obviously, they have to finish the season 11 and 1 in order to get there, but oh man, these uh, 95 96 Bulls, unbelievable situation for them. And be sure to tune in again Wednesday night when Ron Burke takes us back once again for the third and final installment on the 96 Bulls. And we'll also be joined for an exclusive by none other than Scottie Pippen, who will give us his thoughts on where the Bulls stand among the greatest teams of all time. Hmm, we're on where he's going to go. <laughs> Joined right now by Ali Abdelnabi. And, uh, Ali, you weren't on the Chicago Bulls, but Maybe. you were playing that year. So, you know, from the opponent's perspective, if we're going to talk about this team, uh, you have to start with Mr. Jordan Absolutely. and what he did. Absolutely. And I remember the 92 finals. We're talking about the 96 team, but we'll go back to 92 when we played against my Portland Trailblazers. He opened up with seven threes in the first half at 35 at halftime and basically kind of sealed the series in the first game. 96, it was the same thing. He came back from playing baseball. He was revived, energized. You can see him here. That's the number 23 we all know, Flight 23. And he basically led them on both ends of the floor. When you get the greatest basketball player to play at the, playing at that time to play both ends of the floor, everybody falls in line. You see other guys on that team become good defensive players because number 23 was doing it as well. Does it make a difference to you as an opponent if he wore number 45? Maybe a little bit off of Superman or no? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. The jumpers are still falling nonetheless. <laughs> okay, so if Batman had Robin, MJ had his uh, Scottie Pippen as we take a look at his uh, 30 points per game and six sure. rebounds and stuff. But I tell you what, not just that he's a 49, 50% shooter, it's on a lot of jumpers going on, too. But as I mentioned, okay, he is Batman. Robin has to be Scottie Pippen. And, and he's probably that Robin that, uh, I forget the, the Chris actor in the movies that wasn't happy being. <laughs> Chris uh, O'Donnell. Uh, yeah, Chris O'Donnell <laughs> was probably was happy being Robin. But talk about uh, uh, Mr. Pip. Well, you know, the thing about Pippen, we, we talked to Scottie actually on NBA TV last week. So to answer your question earlier where he thinks his team fits in, uh, Scottie said on NBA, TV, NBA radio that he thinks they're the best team of all time. Well, we're going to so get that from him. Those are heads. Yeah. <laughs> Those are heady words, but again, the 72 points he talked about, the fact that these guys were really a, a team, it was a mm -hmm. team effort night in and night out. They got rid of Horace Grant in their early three wins, mm -hmm. three championships, and then brought in Dennis Rodman for the last three, picked up even more energy. But when you played against this team, it wasn't just the fact that you had to worry about stopping guys like Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. It was on the other end, too, where you worried about what were you going to do in scoring because they were such great defensive players on the ball, and then they were great collectively as well, Andre. They were Great rotators. They rebounded well. They had guys who would, knew their roles and were really, really good at it. Get us to the addition of the worm, though, and obviously the hierarchy there goes to Michael and Scotty, and they're like, hey, if he's just going to go for rebounds, bring him on. <laughs> Covered here and all. So what did, what did you think about the addition? Well, I, I thought the addition was great because they lost Horace Grant, who brought them workmanlike attitude, and then you bring in a guy like Rodman, who was the same ilk. He was basically one of these guys who did all the hustle work. He did all the stuff that guys didn't want to do, the dirty work, if you will, underneath the basket, covering 
bring the other team's best big man. So those are things that really don't show up in the stat sheet, but again, appreciated by his teammates nonetheless. Okay, I'm going to put the great Red Arrow back as, as the best coach ever in the NBA. And, of course, you played for Coach K. Right. Where's Phil Jackson real quick? You know what? He may be right underneath Red Auerbach. Again, I think Red Auerbach was so revolutionary in his time, but Phil Jackson, again, there's something to be said for teaching and being able to coach talent. That is not an easy thing to do. A lot of people out there say, well, he had Michael Jordan. He had Shaquille O'Neal. He had Kobe Bryant. No, I'm, the, I'm of the thinking where, you know what, you have to also get these guys also to be on the same page. And it's tougher, Andre, when you have superstars because superstars think like superstars. Indeed, you're right. Good to have you here. Always good to be with Thanks you, Andre. Thanks for the breakdown. Again, we will have much more on the Chicago Bulls from 95-96 on Wednesday night.